Thursday, March 21st, regularly scheduled select board meeting to order. To my left is uh, Jer uh, Justin uh, Lawrence, Flo, Flo Smith. To my right is uh, Jeremy Hansen and our town administrator, Dana Hadley, who is also is Diane Isabella, our town treasurer. Um, addition to changes to the agenda, Dana. I do have a few changes, Brad. Um, I would like to remove the appointment with the police chief from the agenda. Um, we'll put that on at a later time. He won't be giving a report on the department this evening. Um, and I have a few additions that I would like to add. Uh, I'd like to add approval of three special event permits. I'm expecting Jeff Prescott um, to come in to talk to you about that. Um, I would like to add a resolution for support of application for sewer services on Crosstown Road. I would like to add a discussion on the heating system at the town garage. I would like to ask that the Liquor Commission convenes. Thank you, that's it. Okay, um, public comment? Hearing none, Treasurer's report, Diane? Okay. Um, I provide the select board with a February budget status report, trial balance, and delinquent tax report. Uh, and then I did want to talk about a grant that we received for the Mirror Lake Culvert project. That, that was something that is finally completed at this point. The town, uh, between FY18 and FY19, has invested $229,747.80 in this project, of which we have a $175,000 grant, which I received last week. So that leaves the town with a net of $54,747.80 of what we had to pay for ourselves. Uh, the next project that we have is the Richardson Road Culver. And to date, we've spent $5,115.20 on that. And I just want to make you aware of that. That's all that. Okay. Still go. Yep. Uh, Carla. Yeah, I am. <laughs> See, we're putting this off. Dana, I actually don't have the resolution. You have the resolution, I do. though, right? Okay. I do. So, um, if you recall, first of all, I should announce that the Berlin Town Plan has announced Town Plan of the Year by the Vermont Planners Association. <laughs> um, They're also having a reception on the, it, I think it's the 11th. The 11th at the State House. I think it's at Capitol Plaza. Oh, is it? Okay. Because someone should go accept the award. I don't know if that's going to be you or. Well, I'm planning to go, but I was going to send the invitation right. to the board as well. Um. So, so anyway, as far as and in the town plan, if you recall, we had um, designated two village potential village center designations and the town center designation. And the two village center designations um are actively being pursued at this point they're fairly straightforward and simple processes it's very different from a town center designation um, benefits are mainly that you're eligible for for your priority funding you know grant funding priority your your application takes priority in certain grant funding opportunities etc etc cetera, et cetera. so um tom has been working with um i can't think of his name from northfield um Anyway, there's a champion there working on the, the one for the Riverton area. And um, they are hoping to put it forward. So the, there's a resolution, I believe, is it for both of them, Dana? Um, this one is just for the Riverton. OK. Yeah. So because I think that one's the quickest, that is the one that's. Oh, I'm sorry, it's both. No, oh, it Village, is both. Riverton, okay. and Village. Yeah. And I think, uh, Tom, are you speaking? They're, the they're, they're speaking on the on part of the other yeah, one. Yeah, the other one is yeah. for this this district here, the um, sort of the Berlin's corner district. And so basically the, the, the work now really is drawing the boundaries, um, what, what gets included and what doesn't. Um, the, the biggest incentives are tax credits for um, improvements in the districts. It does have to be a commercial property um, in the, to get the improvements, but if you look at, they, oh, I can leave this for you folks if you'd like. This shows like Hardwick, how, you know, a lot of the hard work. I uh, have this. Okay. Um, which 
outlined a lot of that. Part. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, a lot of the work that's done in Hardwick has done through the tax credits. That's, that's created a lot of incentives for people to, to refurbish the buildings. And um, I know, I think Riverton area is probably a little bit more likely to see sort of the mixed use, maybe commercial stuff. I think up here it's more sure. the idea of getting Thanks. sewer, you know, getting application for getting Same infrastructure uh, to serve, serve the residences here. But we'd like you, we, we support the designations and we'd like you to, we need a resolution from the select board to go with the application, supporting that, uh, those designations. Okay. So, so that's why I'm here. So, so there's, are there any historical buildings that you know of on either side that would be eligible for these like preservation grants or anything? I don't know. Um, and and um, they're, again, they're drawing districts, uh, or, the, or the, I think they've already worked out the boundaries of the one in Riverton. Um, mm -hmm. um, and they've, they've met with the Central Vermont Planning Commission because it has to ha have um, civic buildings in it um, in order to sort of qualify. And so they had to draw the boundaries in certain ways, but it looks like, I mean, the, the man that's in charge of the, sort of in charge of the program came and met with us. This is his PowerPoint. And he essentially works with you so that when you put the application in, it's, as I understand it, he, he doesn't, it, it's sort of, it's ready to go. And there's really no, the approval process is pretty straightforward with this particular one. So he will, he's been working with Tom on the on how to develop the Riverton one and um, this is just the designation yes is that right yeah yes. so you would I mean this is the first step if a property owner were interested yeah. in within that district yes and they do that they directly with the yeah. state we don't yeah. have any the town doesn't have any yeah. involvement in that it's all direct relationship for anybody that is actually interested in taking advantage of the tax credits um, the town though is eligible for funding based on those designations. And it also allows you to do a neighborhood designation around it, which which is which can have some benefits for housing development. There's like a half acre circle you can draw around these designations and there's incentive there's permitting benefits to having those designations. We had intended to do that on the town center. I'm not sure about the village centers. I think Tom was has talked about it, but. Do you see a downside, any, any downside really, in that other than the town has to do bookkeeping and? and there's really, uh, you know, for the grant to me. What, I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah, to get money, you have to take yeah. do bookkeeping, but yeah. I mean, no, and, there really is no downside and there's, it, there, it's, it may, nothing may happen because it's really up to the individual landowners to take advantage of the opportunities, except for with infrastructure where the town, I think, can take advantage of some of those. Mm -hmm grant funding opportunities or planning, you know, planning type uh, grants and things like that. Do you know if the Berlin Corners map extends down across town where we're talking about possibly extending sewer lines? We haven't drawn that yet. But I think that's part of the purpose is to, is... I don't think so. I think no. that's the Berlin Corners project. Uh, did, oh, is it, so, so, but, okay, did, did I say Riverton? No, you said Berlin Corners. I'm sorry, I missed no, that. Berlin Corners, yes. yeah. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, it, it encompasses this building, presumably, and the, and the roads yes. here. The answer would be yes, then. Okay, yeah. so well, that's encouraging, then. Because yeah. it looks like um, in the, the ANR, Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund, we get extra points, then, going yes. into those. Yeah. Okay. So I think I really think it's, it's only a benefit, and the work is minimal, so the cost, the cost uh, there's really no cost to it to us um, yeah. in terms of getting those done. So I think there's really no downside for... So I'm going to move that we approve the resolution as presented with um, my name cor uh, correctly spelled at the bottom. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to speak with Mr. Mr. Tom. I'll second that. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? I've got one question. Oh, sure thing, Tom. If we can. <laughs> now, the village, uh, first of all, it gives us five points on our sewer. Application, grant application, application, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do I understand it right that you can have commercial in one of the structures as long as the resident lives upstairs? Is that part of the criteria for village? I don't, I'm not sure the resident has to live there. I just know that you can only get the tax credits for some sort of a commercial purpose. It can't be just a, to a historic home re home renovation if the home if the homeowner is it's just a resident. You can't get the tax credits for that because the idea is to build vi you know vibrancy and and the econ economic development within the, the, these these designations. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not. Sh so I don't. I wouldn't think you'd have to live in it. 
I, I didn't get that impression from the from when I got do you, the. Yeah, well. Do you have this, Tom? This this has a, a breakdown of all of like the all the benefits of the village centers. Yeah. This. Yeah. No, no. That's that's it. Just look. That's it, yeah. oh, oh no, that is. So that is different. This is the application guideline. Right? I don't know if this is the same, but you can have that as well. Well, I think, uh, I guess my question was, that I, actually, I, it's too bad Tom isn't here, because I asked him the question. I, this historic residential area would commercially or professional offices would go just like that without, as you know, without, I think you know, without, you know, some kind of town zoning control. I, I really believe it will. It's just too close to everything else. Well, and the residents are always, as you know, really concerned about that. And when I brought that up with Tom, he said that the village uh, center designation um, uh, does allow commercial, which I think is okay, but it had to be, li it's limited, be the person had to live in the building or live upstairs. I can't speak to that, but I, what I can speak to is it doesn't change the underlying zoning. So the district is still zoned what it's zoned in terms of the town. Okay. So, so I'm not sure if he was talking about. So maybe he was talking about yeah. the zoning. Is that a, that's a present zoning? This is currently, that we just uh, passed. It yes. allows commercial, but you have to live upstairs. Well, it allows. It, it, it's more of a, a residential area, so it's not. More like a home occupation. Yes, 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 yes. So I think maybe that's yeah. what he was speaking to. Yeah. Okay. But honestly, that was my one of my hesitations. I wasn't sure about this area, but I yeah. think the fact that it allows for some of that infrastructure, the grants, I, I think it's, it's it's. No, I'm it's comfortable positive. with it. I, yeah. After talking yeah. to Tom, I just I may have got yeah. his explanation. And he he's more he has met with the like I said he's met with CVRPC. Yeah. And he's much more up to speed on exactly what. So his answer is. to the to he's the probably village more center, accurate than me. His answer to me when I asked about the building center, he's probably talking about the zoning. Yes, yes, because okay. that still applies. Yeah. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Can I ask one more thing? Sure. Um, so in regards to the town center designation, I just wanted to to ask for the possibility of some funding. We the, the mall, I'm not sure what's going on with the mall, but they are no longer have a consultant that's that's doing the application. And I don't know if Dana has, has had any conversations with the mall owners, but I'm a little concerned because the, the momentum was really there for getting the, the town center designation. Now we have the town plan, and we have the zoning, which we worked very hard to put through so that we could prepare for the town center designation. And now I'm afraid the momentum might be lost. And we have Brandy, the consultant who's, who did the zoning and the town plan, who's willing to do the work for the town center application. Um, and I think we've got some money, Tom's wrangled some money together. But what I was, was going to request was the possibility of, um, of allocating the $14,000, I think it was $14,675 application fee that the 99 unit building paid to allocate that to the town center sort of fund to pursue that designation. I, I know you probably can't decide now, but I just wanted to. I was going to report that in my report oh, you a little bit on the town end, um, but since we're talking about it, um, <laughs> we gross budget, and it makes it very. I mean, in other words, even though it's coming in as a revenue, we can't necessarily spend that money because it hasn't been approved by the town. The town has approved us to spend X. Yeah. And, <coughs> Um, could we spend that money? Yes, but we would have to be sure we didn't spend somewhere else so that we wouldn't go over okay. as the bottom line. Um, and I told Tom that I would think about how okay. maybe we could... Well, he put me up to this, so. We could. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Tom has great ideas, and as I tell, I tell him all the time, so I don't mind saying it in public, um, <laughs> you have to go by the laws, Tom. That's uh, right. <laughs> and, and I know it's not on the agenda anyway. I just figured I'd throw it out there just because I really, yeah. really don't want to lose. Well, and, and it, but I think not, we're all on the same team. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the good news is, is that that application has happened and that they're pursuing some other <clears throat> opportunities over there, I think, at this time. So, so I think, I'm just hoping that if the mall pulled out, we would just be... Well, and I'm it. having, I had a very good conversation with Ken from the mall oh, yesterday. Good. 
Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, he's very interested in it as well as other interested okay. parties. So we'll, I'll, stop we'll, we'll, we'll keep you. Don't we'll worry. Talk, we'll yeah. talk. <laughs> yeah. Free. Yeah. All right. Thank you, folks. Yeah, thank, thank you, Carla. Fred, maybe you want to do the other one, the resolution for support of the application of sewer sure. services since um, Rob and no, we'll Tom are here. here. And that was, um, and help me with this because I've just found out about this. Um, this is basically you're looking for the board to support application for a grant for a sewer line extension. Um, and the Public Works Board is on, on board with it. Yes. If the, a grant is obtained, the project would go forward. If not, maybe not. Maybe not. Is that That's yeah. right? Yeah. Probably not. Um, Tom has prepared a resolution for that. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to see it. And. Jeremy, if you want, I can have him redo your name and we can re-sign another one. No, it's just, just, just me being sassy. Oh, well, anyway, sorry. Dana, you could pass that around if you want. Right, that's what Tom had given me that. Yes. And I didn't know if you needed more copies. But yeah. So, did you need this back? Well, I got it from Tom. Do you need it back, Tom? No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. That's what the, this is asking for, just the support of the board to apply for this grant. And so if you could, if you're interested a motion. in that, a motion. Is, is this what we're, yep, what we're approving? I, I haven't seen it. Uh, no, you haven't seen it. I just got it, so I'm sorry about that. Mm. So uh, I can give you a little quick background on yeah. it, if it would be helpful. Um, Tom found out that the Northern Border Regional Commission has something like um, $20 million or something to spend in this area. Um, a lot of them are big projects, uh, fiber optics, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, infrastructure such as uh, sewer lines, water lines are also eligible. It's a 50% match by the town. It's on a reimbursable, oh, I should tell you, I went to the meeting yesterday, so this is all really current. They held a, they held a meeting over at the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and I went to, and Tom had another commitment uh, and didn't go, but uh, the, the town has to give uh, the Northern Border Commission a letter of intent by the 29th of this month, so that's not much time at all. Um, so I know Tom has prepared this. He's also prepared um, a one-sheet description of the project, 3,000 feet of sewer and pump station, roughly, and how much money we're asking for, which was about $167,000. I've kind of forgotten. Not a lot of money compared to some of the projects that the applications are. But and it's got, um, I think it's got a doggone good chance, as you know, the this, the, all the municipal, all of the residents, the, there's like nine of them, nine plus three more that we haven't talked to. Um, they all would like starting with Wayne Lamberton and then the Pludes and then the Grierson's on, on down. They all have the same kind of on-site systems. Some of the systems are in a wetland, some of them, they're all pretty marginal. If you look at Rob's old soil maps, you'll find it's pretty shallow to hard pan. Um, of course, none of them are failing, right? But... <laughs> oh, no. Mine works. Mine works. Good. Mine works, too. <laughs> but um, we talked about and did a study. Uh, the Sewer Commission uh, had Bernie Chinette uh, a year or two a while ago uh, do a preliminary engineering, how much it would cost. And it was well beyond what the residents could support. And they didn't feel comfortable setting a precedent by, you know, the Sewer Commission uh, having the town pay a sewer line extension because then you'll have them all over the place as I as I understand yeah, the, yeah. the issue. So um, and it was far beyond what an individual home home just they're just gonna sell their house with their septic system as is, you know, and 
and the problem will ever get fixed. Um, so this grant, um, I think we have a doggone good chance. The village designation really helps, gives us five extra points as they grade the project. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty relatively confident that, um, that our, our application will be viewed favorable. The match can be volunteers' time. I'm keeping track of my time, of the time I spent at the meeting. I don't know if it's eligible or not. I asked them if the Bernie Chenette study uh, was eligible. It's already been paid for. Um, and they thought, they didn't really know, but they thought it might be. I asked them if, uh, if the borings we did for the water line could somehow be be used for match because you need borings for the sewer line. Um, if the town uses stone or, or town equipment, that's all eligible for match. So it's a pretty liberal match uh, requirement. So the letter of intent has to be in by uh, next Friday. And then the application, um, the town application that we haven't filled out yet, um, which has just been a day since they briefed us on it. Um, I think it's due in, I want to say July. It's July, yeah. July. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have some time to, to fill out that application. And this, is, and, and this is, was not previously eligible. This is not money that was, was available to us here. The last farm bill actually took this pot of money that was only available up in the kingdom and sort of the border regions, so the northern borders, uh -huh. and the farm bill changed the designation of what it meant to be northern borders to be all of Vermont now. Uh -huh. So now all of Vermont can go apply for this, this pool of, this rather large pool of $20 million. And I know like CV Fiber, we're, we're looking at that too. And we're, uh -huh. getting, yeah. we're actually, I have a meeting with uh, USDA Rural Development because they're sort of working with us and some other folks doing the same thing. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, we're, we're going to be asking for a rather larger piece of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting at the briefing yesterday, they were saying that um, a lot of the grants are large, large grants and there was probably I think Montpelier had like three projects in their River Park, and there, you know, there were a lot. I would guess maybe 20 or 25 people applying, and, and a lot of them were big. And Tim Turney of, from the Agency of Development Community Affairs was saying that they do like small infrastructure projects because there's a, you know, a five million, five hundred, five million dollar project here would take 130,000 and. and Apply it to some of the smaller ones, even if they didn't, even if the smaller ones didn't rank high on their criteria list. So, so um, I think it's a good bet, and I encourage the town to apply for the grant and send a notice of intent, and we'll fill out the application if you agree. So I move that we sign the letter of intent for the Northern Borders grant for the sewer extension. I second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Nice job, Tom. Hmm. Not happening yet. Not yet, but. Okay, nice. Thank you. So that changes. Changing our timeline on things, but that's okay. The water's done, so I figured I ought to start working on soon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. In. Appreciate your time. Licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. That, that I am getting <laughs> I am actually doing something here. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> I move that we approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19 G19 with checks 18958 through 19012 in the amount of $87,586.45. Also, Northfield Savings Bank warrant number 17 in the amount of $5,970.53. Also, payroll warrant number 19 19 for payroll from March 3rd, 2019 through March 16th, 2019 in the amount of 
$539.97, and also the February General Journal and Tax Admin entries. Here. Any further discussion? Everybody's reviewed the bills? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Brad, maybe the next with the special event permit, Jeff Prescott. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, special event permits. Um, we have received an application for three special event permits, and these are um, events that have happened in the past several years, probably. But yeah, I, I see some new faces, so I could give a quick overview of our events. Uh, Central Vermont Runners is a nonprofit volunteer organization. We promote health and fitness in Central Vermont through running and running related activities. Um, we produce a number of races open to the public uh, throughout the year. Three of them um, have impact on the town of Berlin. Uh, the Paul Mailman 10 Miler, this will be the 45th year for this event. Uh, the Capital City Stampede, it'll be the 42nd year for that event. And then Berlin Pine the event, we lost count, but it's 40 something. So um, the Paul Mailman 10 Miler is a 10 mile race on April 27th, which is a Saturday morning. Uh, the start and finish and all the parking and registration activities are in the city of Montpelier. Uh, but the uh, event does go out on the Junction Road area of West Berlin uh, with a turnaround up on Jonesbrook Road. Um, the Capital City Stampede is on Saturday, June 8th. It's a 10K event. It also starts and finishes in Montpelier. Also goes out the Junction Road in West Berlin the turnaround is before Three Mile Bridge. And then Berlin Pond is entirely within the town of Vermont, uh, Berlin. The registration and parking are here at the town office. Uh, the start and finish are down by the pond, and it's just a single loop of the pond. Um, I have brought this, um, since they've done this many times, and the police chief has no issues as long as they maintain the standard of safety that they have in the previous years. They have also asked to have the permit fee waived, the $50 permit. They said, and you said there's three events? There's three events. Okay. Move to approve all three uh, of the running events. And authorize the select board chair to sign? Yes. And I second that. Oh, and I'll also mention we did provide an insurance certificate for the town of Berlin as the name's insurance. Yes, I have that. Excellent. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Okay. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank I'll you very much. I'll put this back in. to you. Okay. Jeff, okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for explaining everything. Thank you. Care of all the additional <coughs> additions yet? We haven't. We haven't. Heating system? The heating system is the next one that we've added. Um, the town garage has two heating systems, mm -hmm. Tim. One is in marginal condition and the other is in very poor condition. I'm very curious. Cool. Well, I will. It's kind of. Um, and to the bottom line, it needs to be replaced. Um, and they have 30 years. We do have, Tim has talked with Gillespie Fuels, and they have suggested a propane unit, a, a Mogini. Switching from oil to propane. Rather than use oil. Um, that would be a cost of $4,490 to do that, uh, to have a new 250,000 BTU propane-fired Modine unit heater, remove the oil unit, 
run the gas line and set the tank. Gillespie Fuels and Propane <coughs> owns the tank. Uh, materials, 3470 the labor is $1,020, $4,490. And you have money in your, you have $5,000 in your energy <coughs> line that could cover that. Um, if it were a 185,000 BTU oil-fired unit heater and just replacing the current, um, the old unit, that would cost a total of $7,143.07. Have we looked at um, pellet furnaces? No, I don't believe we ever need it with those. Okay, I mean, I, I know a lot of people in like efficiency Vermont. There's a, I don't know if it's if the towns are eligible for that, but there's a, a credit where they will actually pay part of the installation of a, of a pellet furnace. I don't believe they have any yet, though. It'd have to be huge. But the um, would you like us to look at that? I, I, I would. Yeah. So, so the, yeah. the the building um, that my ex works in in Barry um, Down Street. They, um, they're on the corner of uh, Keith and Summer Street, mm -hmm. and it's a big both a office space and there's. 40 apartment buildings, it's a three or four story building, and they have a, the big pellet, pellet hopper, yeah, and it's and that heats the whole building with that pellet furnace. We can look into that. The only thing I'm thinking, Jeremy, with that is that, and I don't know how, I'm not familiar with these mm -hmm. things, how often they need to be fed. I mean, so like during the weekend or something, would someone have to come in? A lot of storage. No. It's, it's, would it be it's enough just storage a, so it could... I mean, it's, oh, yeah. the, the, those are, or whatever well, and then you'll have a truck that'll come in and just, just fill, like they would fill an oil tank or fill a, a gas tank, they just fill the hopper. The hard part's getting the ashes out. Right. Oh, okay. I can tell you that just from my personal experience with propane prices where they are, I had a pellet stove in my house, mm -hmm. much as I like the idea of it, and it was with Gillespie's fuel, the deal I get on propane, I actually get more BTUs for my dollar mm -hmm. out of propane than I do with pellets. For, um, for, for, for the moment, I'm just... He, it's been that way for the last six years. He told me that he, um, Stephen Coral, he kind of more handles the oil part of it, but um, he got the figures and stuff for the propane. Well, why don't you He's, let us re research a little bit, Tell, we'll bring it back at the next meeting. He said that um, um, the town's paying just a little over a dollar a gallon for propane. So, I mean, that's pretty cheap. Yeah. And yeah. Quite, a, quite a discount when you go to cook, when you start burning a lot of it. Right. Yeah, and he he was here and he looked at the situation over there and he thought about putting the tank over here next to the fence by the generator. And if he was to do that, then you could go propane here too. Just turn, turn the burner the converted it. furnace here to propane and do away with oil hmm. because one of the other problems that we have is those are underground oil tanks oh. and they've been there for a long time are we gonna have to pull them out well we got to do our we got to do our diesel fuel anyways because we've switched to above ground tank over there because the state wouldn't let us put any more fuel in the ground over there so what they're going to do is, they're going to have Vermont Environmental, he called it, it's going to come in. We're going to have to dig it up, cut a hole in the top of the tank. They put people down in there and clean it, and then you can fill it with sand and leave it there so you don't have to take it out hmm. of the ground. You see, that's all going on. And if we run out of sand in the winter, we can go back down the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the what? tank here is a 500-gallon tank, and our tank is a 1,000-gallon tank over there. Oh, what fuel do we use to have in the generator back here? Is that diesel also? That's yes, diesel, but it has its own. Right, right. No, I was built right into it. I, I was just thinking, if yeah. at some point we, we decide that we don't want to keep keep that up and we wanted to switch that to propane too. Oh. And I'm, I'm thinking. I don't, I don't know if you'd be able to with that. That's pretty old. Well, I'm, I'm saying if we were to replace the generator, oh, oh, replace we, it, yeah. and if we had oh, yeah, a, a, a source of propane, then we could run that and we could yeah. feed the generator with that as well. Yeah. But um, they they had to do some major work to let us keep using the furnace that we got. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they had to put steel inside of it. Firebox is totally gone. <coughs> it's been here for 30 years. 
That's a long time. Mm -hmm. But we do have, I mean, it's going to hang on for another. Yeah, he said we probably could get so. through the winter <laughs> yeah. this year, but before, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, before. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, we can always carry the, the $5,000 over in June yep. into next year because you get the, the, bone, the one in the back part of the garage is not nearly as bad as the one in the front part. Because the back one, we got it turned way down. It's down on like 55 degrees because yeah. you know we're not we don't work out there that often, so we get the heat turned way down. But the front one I keep on about 65, so it runs more. The tank that feeds those furnaces is that separate from the diesel fuel? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on this this yeah. side of the building out here. The diesel tank is on the front side out. Yeah. Because we've got to uh, do that this spring. Yep. You know, dig that up and get it clean and fill it with sand and fill it back to it. Because they gave us an above ground tank for free. A thousand gallon above ground tank. The retainer too? Huh? They give you a retainer too? A cement retainer to put it in? No, we don't have to because it's a double wall tank. Okay. And they supplied the pump, everything, as long as we stayed buying fuel with them. Nothing. Uh, I mean, that fuel was cheap. But we do have to complete getting the other tank closed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to do that this Because the state is. State, state, state will give us time to do it this spring. Does that? I'm not sure. I don't know if that's about the building. I spawn areas of all the petroleum cleanup fund. And I don't know if there's not any ground contamination there, is there? No, the, the problem is, is it has, right? the tank has a detector system in it, and it's stable. So we drain the tank, mm -hmm. we pump it dry. Okay. So there's nothing in the tank. Yeah. But um, that's why the state shut us down. And it was going to cost us $5,000 to upgrade the detecting system. So instead of spending the five thousand dollars to do that and still have to go through the, the whole hassle of keeping track of how many gallons of fuel you take out of it and how many gallons of fuel you put into it every day. <laughs> so PJ had to do that every single day. And I'm sure we, we, that. we keep track of our fuel even though we, we're not doing that now. We still write down when we pump out the tank that we have now, we, we keep track of our fuel. But, I mean, that was a lot of time. Every morning he had to dip the tank, write down all the figures, and he had to, everything had to match up when the guy came from the state so that there was, you know, if there was any leakage anywhere. So, I mean, that was, you know, it's costly. Sure. So, there's, you know, there's no sense of, Having it. I mean, the, the state of Vermont did away with all their fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. They get their fuel at Maplewood, South Village Grocery, Williamstown, Montpelier. They don't. They don't have their tanks anymore. No but they didn't go to above ground tanks. So this this would be high enough that we should probably go to bid technically for the, the furnace. It's, um, it's above what, the five thousand is the threshold. Oh, five thousand threshold. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're we're technically supposed to have. Three, three, estimates. three estimates. You can weigh that. I right. mean, this is a vendor that we use, and so sure. that's why. I mean, they supply the water. And we can, I mean, I have not had a chance to research anything on a pellet furnace, mm -hmm. but we can. Well, if you're going to do that, then you must as well get estimates for the pellet furnace and get estimates for. Um, a couple other estimates on the gas furnace. Okay. And while you're at it, I don't know if it would be a good time now, but I mean, if the other furnace, how old is the other furnace? The ones you don't use much. The back one. Both of them put in the same time. So both 30 years. Yeah. So you might you might want to take and see if there'd be a better price if they were to install two. Okay. And if we're going to switch fuel, we must well switch fuels. Well, it's just that it's foolish to take and have them here 
to put in one furnace and next year well, have to have them come back. Well, <clears throat> like I said, we, we can get through to July. So if we carry over the 5,000 that I have now, we're going to have 5,000 next year. So yeah. that would cover the, the other furnace. So they could do them all at the same time. Yeah, that's what the other thing is. It might be cheaper to mm -hmm. do it that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can get by for the rest of this year. He said it's, it's bad, but they calmed it up pretty good. I mean, they were there for a long time. Cutting steel and and, 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 and I, I I don't understand how the how the two are laid out back there. But would it be possible to get one was one larger one that could feed? Uh, it's, to no, it's got a, we got a wall in between okay. shop. Okay, that's fine. And they hang from the ceiling. I see. The way they are right now too. It just it just blow, blows down then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else too? Um, cross down. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was over there today, fixed a couple spots, but they went really bad. More rough than they were muddy, but um, I don't think we've seen the, the start of month season, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so I just want to know what we want to do here, how much we want to spend over there. I was complimenting that came well, well, over we, it tonight yeah, and yeah, said well, it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I was over over it two or three times today, and I go <coughs> over at least once a day. Mm -hmm. So I, I, what we've done in the past is we've given you the authority okay. to say that okay. this is the time that we're going to do it. We just would want to make sure we do 20. I'm not going to, I'm not, it got pretty nasty in the hill there yeah. for a little bit, and, and now it's, it's got it's, all it, yeah, it's, it, it's good. It's okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I'm not going to spend any money there in that hill because it doesn't benefit anybody but somebody for a shortcut. And um, I'm going to fix it down where Shirley and, and uh, Chris live mm -hmm. if I have to. But I'll just put up road close signs and if they, that way you're covered if somebody gets in there and gets stuck and they can't come back on the town saying, well, you know, so if we can do like a 48 hour notice mm -hmm. um, for porch yeah. form or something just mm -hmm. to make sure that w when you decide you want to pull the trigger and we're just gonna just gonna cut off access so everybody knows and then obviously and then and then the buses and the fire department and everybody yeah. can make other plans but right now it's it's pretty good the worst we've had is on the pond front and back side of the pond I heard about that it's, that's the worst that we've had and a little bit on Maryland Hill but so we're saying on Crosstown that you're not going to put a lot of materials into no. that. No, no, it's a waste of money. It when it's, it's a waste of money. It's, okay. I mean, if you want to spend the money, I'll. I'll fix I know. I'm just that. trying to get myself straight. Mm -hmm. That's all. But I mean, it, you know, if you want to keep flow from coming to a meeting, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> well, oh, I, I, <laughs> if I had a nice car, I don't think I'd want to run that road. Like it's bad. How's Dog River? Rough. That's not it wasn't muddy at all, but it's yeah. rough. Yeah. And I went down there twice this winter and fixed it because it got so potholy because mm -hmm. of rain and get cold and then rain and warm up. And, but we just don't have the gravel now. Right. And we said it using it everywhere else. You know, I just. I just haven't done anything on that river. Mm -hmm. But it's not muddy. The last time I was out there. Okay. Today's what? Thursday, I was out there Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I went out through with the grader. Because we went to uh, I'd go to Bartlett Hill and fix a place up there. And then we went to West Hill and West Berlin. And, and then I went out through Dog River. Because I told those guys not to run the not to run Dog River. So they were going to come clear and coming back up over. Northfield Street to get to Riverton. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we dumped some material in the road and pond. On the road, not in the pond. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. And I have money in my budget. And Northeast started crushing today, I believe. Yeah. So if it starts getting worse, I'm going to have to have some material. Also. Yeah. Yeah. And I've talked with Jeff Newton and Northeast, of course, our contract with Northeast and Jeff is from July 1st to 
Jim Carrey. So we're still under the, the same price as what we paid last year, and not uh, yeah. charge us more. Well, okay. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Come in. So you you want it, you're going to get estimates on the furnace. Well, if he, if Dan's going to be looking around, we might as well go the distance. At least yeah. then we'll, I mean, I'll we'll have you about it. You know. yeah. We'll have the, uh, we'll fulfill the obligations to the, as far as getting the three uh, estimates. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, thank you, Tim. Have a great night. No, I'm not going to, not with what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying, they're saying 10 to 18 inches. Wow. That's what Starting when? Um, early morning. Okay. What side, side of the hills or everywhere? Central Lamont area. So in that case, go right to bed. I'm going right over here. Yeah. I'm going right over there. I'm not even going back there. Tell, tell, tell the guys that we appreciate it. It's Definitely. Good. They've, they've been doing a really good job, especially with the and This is going to be a downs. tough one because the roads are soft. Yeah. yeah. We rolled our plows all back today so they won't dig, but it's still going to be a slow drag out. Yeah. I appreciate it. We commend their efforts. Thank <laughs> you so much. It's going to be a long day tomorrow, I think. Well, that's what Channel 3 said. Yeah. 10 to 18 inches. You want me to bring you some coffee in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> That's one good thing about Maplewood being open all morning. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what else is in the additions? Uh, liquor well, Commission? Uh, just the Liquor Commission. Um, if you wanted to do the online training, uh, Jeremy asked me to put that on the agenda. Okay, Jeremy. And <clears throat> yeah, so um, we, I think we all got an email from the League about that they had just created, I think through the insurance program, that they had created a a training for municipal officials on how to deal with data breaches and also some general computer security principles. And that's been something they've been wanting to do for a while and I've been sort of twisting their arm to do for a while. Um, I don't recall the cost. Do I, was that listed in that message? Did it, did it say? I don't remember seeing the cost. But I would, um, if it was, um, manage, if it was manageable and could fit under, under the training costs, I think that would be it would be a valuable thing to ask um, at least a handful of the, the municipal mm -hmm. staff to go and, and attend. We do have a training budget, and maybe they finance part of it with insurance passage. Um, so we certainly could do that. I just want to bring that to everybody else and just get your feedback. I can forward it to you if you like. Perfect. Four sets to approve, although the ones from February 7th um, you cannot approve because um, you don't have a quorum to do that. Uh, Jeremy researched that a little bit and said that the board did not technically have to approve them. We don't, we don't actually technically need to ever approve minutes. No, I mean, but it's nice to do it. It is indeed. I think it's a good idea to do but, it. But for example, I mean, there's only. Um, you know, there's a meeting that Angelina wasn't at. We will never have a quorum and be able to approve those because, you know, Pete and Wayne aren't here. Yeah. So we will just have to say, these look reasonable. You and I can look at them and say, yeah, that happened and get on with our lives. Mm -hmm. So I'm just putting them in the town record as unapproved. And now I'll, I'll put it out why. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And the trouble is, is that it also, we spent some money, or looked, to, looked into spending some money on those things too. Because we did the excavator mm -hmm. and the uh, 
trailer, I believe. You did. Yeah. yeah. True. So make sure that those bid sheets and everything are in there. All right, I, I have attached them as an addendum to the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have the 21st. Um, and that might be the same situation. Yeah, because it was Cause, um, well, it's the same situation tonight because Angelina is not here tonight. Right. So sure. uh, next next meeting, maybe we can get those done. You have March fourth, and you can't put those without Angelina. Thursday, March seventh. Wow, you can prove those. We <laughs> <laughs> move to approve the meeting minutes for the Thursday, March seventh, twenty nineteen meeting as presented. And I second that. Any other comments on that? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Where are we at now, Dana? We're at? Um, I'm at the town administrator report. So Mark said, oh yeah, yeah, uh, town administrator's report. Um, I think I had spoken, we spoke a little bit with Carla about the uh, town center designation. Um, we are working, it's been a, a little while getting used to the mall no longer has Mike Rushman and he was the impetus that kept the project going. Um, we have met with the state. We, we thought we were much closer to getting a town center designation than we are and we're not and we were disappointed by that. but. In thinking about it, I think that it's a good idea that, that we have to do what we have to do because we'll have a, a real good basis when we go and do that. There is a lot of professional work that we'll need help with. Um, we don't, the staff does not have that expertise that, that we need. Um, we did get an estimate from Brandy Saxton who did our um, master plan. We haven't put it out of the bid, so we do need to do that if we were doing things. Um, Brandy's fee wasn't so bad, but I, I never believe that that's all the money that it's going to cost. And I think this is going to be a project that is over a few years. So I think what I'm really looking for the board, if you're for your continued support, I have been working with them all, and they are supportive. I met this week with downtown community housing. They are interested in doing a project in Berlin. Is that down street? Oh, sorry, down street um, housing and community development. Um, I think that the mall is willing to, um, and we haven't come down to the dollar signs, but is willing to help finance part of it. Um, and what I need to get together for you is really what the cost is going to be. I haven't gotten all the people. Was, was down street? willing to support that administratively or otherwise? I haven't talked to Down Street as far as I think they are willing to support it in, in the so that they can go ahead with their project. Sure. And it also is important to them because they also are applying for funding to, to uh, for this property that they're planning. They, I'm just saying that they might have some in-house in talent that could who may also be able to help with this downtown de designation. I will speak to them. Could be. Could be. Do you need a motion on this, Dana, no, to I'm take just it? To, just as I'm just support? trying to give you where we are on it. Um, and as Carla mentioned, um, Tom brought the idea to me about using the funds that are coming in to the zoning. And of course, it's a, it's a flush of cash coming into zoning because of this project. but. I don't picture many more projects like that coming through. And it's not like we really, yes, we could we could spend the money and overdraw the expense account, but we can't overdraw the bottom line. Yeah. And I think it's not prudent to um, spend money that taxpayers haven't given you permission to spend. Yeah. Um, I just wonder if you needed, if you wanted a motion just to, to support your efforts in this, not so much to spend any money. I guess, I guess you know, if you'd like to do a motion, that would be great. I'm just wanting the, the board's feedback as far as should we continue trying to do this. 
Did the mall indicate an amount that they're interested in helping, a percentage per se? They haven't. No. They haven't. I would imagine that if they're looking at you know, residential development, that's a huge. Well, when I talked to Ken, I mean, he was talking, you know, the $10,000 proposed by our consultant is no problem for the mall. Um, the, but there are some other costs involved that could get to be but, but, but much more. The, the, the idea and what they had previously brought to the table when, when Michael Rushman was, was on board was that they were going to spearhead and, and continue. Well, if you remember when they came in in 2015 and mm -hmm. we were not going to have to do a thing, but, right, you know. And at that time, I said, "Right, um, yeah." <laughs> and that, that's that, that's kind of where kind of where I'm going here. Yeah. So where we kind of now left holding the bag while they want to go do this development. And this town center designation will help them, no doubt about it. It's a big benefit to them, but I'm trying to look to see if the board agrees with me. I think it's a good thing for the town to go forward to plan for the future. I may never see it, but. Um, but, but are we going to be left holding the bag having paid for this stuff when, in fact, they reap more of the benefits than, than the community at large? I mean, is it taxpayer money that we're talking about um, putting towards something I that's I think a, that in the short term that would be true, but in the long term okay. um, is how I see it. Okay. You mean the capital improvements? And, you know, as far as having more tax base, um, Yes, we're going to have to accept the street, the road, um, yeah. and and do other things that are going to, you know, have expenses. So, yeah, it's going to benefit the mall definitely. Um, there are we have talked with we've talked with the hospital, we've talked with other property owners around about being in the district and what their thoughts were, and everyone's been very positive about the project. Is the hospital willing to chip in? Then? Um, we have asked them that and. We have not gotten an answer. I think you have gotten an answer. <laughs> I think I have too, but I, I'm on television. <laughs> <It's delayed. laughs> so I guess, you know, we put quite a bit of time into this. This this we were not gonna have to do a thing with this. It was just gonna happen like magic, but obviously. But it's for the community. I think the community um, will benefit. Will benefit. Um, Berlin really needs a sense of community. Well, I'll, I, I will be out there saying, color me skeptical. I wish I disagreed with you, but I don't <laughs> completely. <laughs> Anything else on your administrative report? Um, yes, thank you. Um, at the next meeting, the 4th, Velco is holding a public hearing here beginning at 6 o'clock regarding the upgrade project they have planned for the Berlin substation project over on Nelson Drive. They are also going to meet with you in your meeting at 7.15 just to follow up. They've got an application into the PUC and, and um, I thought it would be good for them to come and explain what they were going to do. Um, we have received two hazard mitigation proposals. We have put that out to bid. We received two. Um, I am getting together with the emergency management director, Bruce Richardson. We're getting together next week to go over those to bring you a suggestion of what we think the one you should go with, and we will send you those proposals so that you can review them as well. Um, also, to for that grant, you need to adopt a conflict of interest policy, even though we have one in the um, charter, but I will be updating that. The one that I had given to you a few weeks ago is over the top. Um, so I'm going to water it down and, and we'll try it again. Um, Bob Wernick will be in next time to give you an update on the um, what's going on over at regional planning. On Friday the 5th, I'm going to be going to White River Junction to a construction office be, to go over the work that's going to be in the town of Berlin on Interstate 89, um, doing some work to be formed with rocks being shaved back. This is not the 63 project, this is another project. A solid rock excavation, ditch work, and other highway related items. It's pretty detailed. Um, but, so I'm going to go see and see what that's about. 
Um, I have two copies of the League News, and I thought I would give a copy, one to Justin and one to um, Flo. And I'm sorry, someone's going to get a damaged one, and I'm going to blame the post office for that. Thank you um, so much. It's a, Thank you. Much appreciated. And, and maybe you might get one directly eventually. Do you get one in the mail? You don't? No. Oh, that's right. Um, and that's all I have for Thank you, Dean. Um, no, to recess the select board and convene the liquor control board. Here's second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We have an application for a catering permit uh, from Cornerstone Burger Company doing business as Cornerstone Pub and Kitchen in Barrie. Um, they are catering a corporate party at Union Bank on Thursday the 25th, 4 to 9. They expect 50 people. We need to approve Cornerstone's um, catering request. Second. Any others? That's it. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Move to adjourn the Liquor Control Board and reconvene the Select Board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> motion carries. Uh, let's see here. We have an executive session tonight. I would like to ask for an executive session under two topics. I would like one to be a personnel discussion and another to be a contract discussion. Um, if you would do the personnel on first, the contract is two parts at the top. Okay, so um, I, I'll, I'm not, I'll actually do number one from the contract first, and then I can do both of the motions to enter Fine. executive session yeah. separately. So uh, I move that I move to find that premature general public knowledge of the uh, what contract is, is this? Um, you have to give as much detail. Contract with the Berlin School Board. School board. board. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I move to find the premature general public knowledge of the contract with the Berlin um, School Board, Berlin Elementary School Board, will place the town at a substantial disadvantage. And so but the, I'll do the discussion here. This is just for us to stay on the up and up in terms of how we can go into sessions that aren't recorded and don't go into the minutes. So when we talk about a contract, we have to give enough information so that people know what it is that we're talking about. But we have to say, but it would be a bad idea for us to be discussing this in public. Mm -hmm. Understandable. All in favor? Aye. Aye.